Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is Smart TCG, and today I'm going to be going over the best decks in the Scarlet and Violet 151 format. We have multiple tournaments coming up next month, so it'll be important to make sure that you understand exactly how the metagame is shaping up. So with that being said, we're going to hop into it and go over them. We're going to start at number 10 and then go all the way up to number one. All the deck lists and stuff like that will be in the description as well, so make sure to go check that out. But all right, let's hop into it. Coming in at number 10 here, we have Chen Pao EX. Chen Pao EX has been a deck that has remained very strong over the past couple months, and I do think that it makes a great call for upcoming tournaments. It has one of the most powerful attacks in the game, Hail Blade, dealing 60 damage times 60 for every water energy you discard, and paired up with Super Cold, you can attach as many energies from your hand as possible. This deck is very, very powerful. However, it does run into some consistency issues, which is one of the things that is holding it back. When it sets up, it's one of the most powerful decks in the format and is really, really difficult to beat. However, it sometimes just doesn't function the way that it's supposed to. It is arguably the biggest glass cannon deck currently in the format. When it sets up, it beats pretty much everything. However, you are just going to draw into those hands where the deck just does not cooperate. And that's one of the issues that Chen Pao EX has. I personally think the Pokestop version is the best way to play it, although that does come with some risk as you can win and lose games based off what you Pokestop away. However, I think the risk reward factor is worth it because this list can just absolutely explode when it actually gets going. It's a really good deck, it can beat everything in the format. However, you do have to accept the fact that it is just a little bit inconsistent at times. Still makes a good call though. Hopping to number nine here, we have Fusion Mew Mew VMAX. This deck most recently won the 2023 Pokemon World Championships. Vance Kelly was able to take down the World Championships and then it got top four as well at Pittsburgh with Colin placing in the top four with it. And the deck remains incredibly powerful. It still is very, very strong. Has arguably one of the best, if not the best engines in the game with the Fusion Strike system, allowing you to draw tons of cards every single turn. You have a solid one prize attacker as well with melodious echo a spear tomb counter with a block slider it has pretty much everything that it needs to be successful and obviously mu v max is one of the most powerful attackers in the game however there have been a couple of decks recently that have risen quite a bit in popularity, specifically Charizard EX and also Lugia V-Star, which both are matchups that are relatively difficult for this deck to handle. However, if it doesn't hit those decks, it can truly be anything in the format, and it does have that ability to win games faster than pretty much anything else. And then the deck is still very, very strong if you're able to dodge things like Charizard. It's a good deck. Alrighty, hopping into number eight here, we have Giratina V-Star. Now, this is kind of a controversial deck because some people think it's the best deck in the world and some people think it's absolutely terrible. In my opinion, it's in neither of those. I think it is just a relatively solid deck in the format. You have Comfy and Colorus to be able to get lots of cards in the Lost Zone to then use that Mirage Gate to be able to power up things like Giratina V-Star, Sableye, and Snorlax. And you do have answers to most things in the current standard format. However, this deck is a little bit inconsistent which is one of the issues that it has. Unlike other Lost Zone variants that have things like potentially heavier Pokegear counts for a Seal Stone, Luminion potentially as well, this deck doesn't unfortunately have those cards, so you are a little bit more of a glass cannon deck. Kind of similar to Chen Pao. When you set up perfectly, you can pretty much beat anything. You have answers to most decks in the format. However, it's just getting there, you know, getting to those positions to where, you know, you can attack turn after turn. That can be a little bit difficult. The reason why I have decided to include Snorlax is for specifically that Mew EX. Mew EX is arguably the most hyped up card to come out of the brand new set Pokemon 151, and that causes issues for Giratina being able to copy Giratina V-Star's lost impact attack, being able to knock it out. So being able to respond to the Mew EX with something that's not another two prizer like Giratina, something like Snorlax just seemed like a very, very smart inclusion in the deck moving forward. It also is pretty good against things like Gardevoir. It's solid versus decks as well. Um, like Lost Zone Toolbox too, which is a big HP awkward Pokemon that they don't necessarily want to deal with. So I think it has a lot of potential moving forward as a solid inclusion in this deck. So overall, I think the deck is really, really strong, can be anything. However, with Mew EX coming out and it having some consistency issues, those would be my only concerns with it. But when you get fully set up and you can dodge those Mew EXs, it's pretty difficult to beat. 
Hopping to number 7 here, we have Urshiba VMAX and Thailand VMAX. After Cyrus Davis won the North American International Championships, this deck was put right back on the map as one of the best decks in the format, and also most recently won the Barcelona Special Event. Your goal is to use the Double Gunner paired up with Radiant Alakazam to manipulate the damage on the board to then take knockouts with Metacham B, which allows you to skip a turn to then use powerful attackers like Rapid Shark Urshifu to clean up the board state. I've decided to go with the Spiritomb and Giacomo. This is the list that did win the Barcelona special event, as I do think that the combination of these two cards at least makes the matchup versus Mew slightly winnable and the matchup versus Lugia slightly winnable as well if you get going. The reason why this deck is so low on the list is because it's more matchup based than I think any deck in the format and your opponent will flip over their active and you'll pretty much know if it's going to be an easy game or a really difficult game, which is one thing that I think sometimes holds the deck back. It's kind of matchup roulette almost in a way that you have to play every single tournament that you play this deck. When you hit the good matchups, you're going to be doing pretty good. And if you hit the bad matchups, there's not a whole lot that you can do except to pray. So that's one of the things that I think um, holds this deck back as you could hit three Mew VMAX that are prepared for something like Spiritum and Giacomo, and there's just absolutely nothing you can do. Whereas if you play something like, let's say, Gardevoir or Lugia or, you know, just any of those other decks, they're a lot more, um, they have a lot more balanced matchup spreads, I think. I think that's the best way to put it. Um, and that's one thing that I think makes those decks, you know, potentially a little bit better than something like this. But if you do hit the right matchups, it's incredibly powerful. And if you do get set up, you can pull off some pretty crazy combinations. It's a really good deck still. Moving into number six here, we have the colorless variant of Lugia V-Star. This is a deck that wasn't necessarily talked about a whole lot in the previous format. It got some talk and placed okay in tournaments, but wasn't necessarily a top tier contender. However, now you have a Mew EX, which fixes some problems that this deck had. One of the issues that this deck often had was it wasn't able to take one shots in the early to middle portion of games versus things like Lost Zone Garatina or Single Strike Lugia. But now with the Mew EX, you can use that genome hacking, which is something the deck was desperately needing. This deck doesn't necessarily have as powerful of a matchup spread as single strike lugia but it is a lot more consistent just because it's much more streamlined um and you aren't going to lose games to things like discarding important resources off stuff like single strike crush so i would say this variant is a little bit weaker when it comes to its power level however it does have much more consistency and it's just a more stable deck in general which is the reason as to why i think that this variant has a lot going for it as of right now it's a really strong deck it does a lot of things that single strike lugia does however it's just a little bit more stable in my opinion it's a really strong deck and i think that it's going to perform very well in upcoming tournaments Alrighty, hopping into number five here, we have Maridon EX. Maridon EX has been crushing it in tournaments recently, getting second place at the most recent Pittsburgh Regional Championship piloted by Jesse Park, dominating the scene in Japan as well and doing great in local tournaments. It just is one of the most powerful decks in the format. You have one of the most powerful abilities in the game tandem unit, allowing you to set up your entire board. You have the ability to hit over 300 with things like the Flaffy and Electric Generator, fueling the that Raichu V's dynamic smart. You have the ability also to hit turn one for big numbers with things like Photon Blaster or Raichu V's Lightning Rondo. And you now have Mew EX as well to copy your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks with that genome hacking. This deck is fundamentally a very, very powerful deck. It might not take the best matchups versus everything, but what it loses in matchup threat, it gains in consistency. You pretty much can go into any tournament saying, I am going to have a chance because I'm going to be able to play the game statistically more often than most decks. You're gonna be able to get a board state get set up more than most decks in the format. However, it can be a little bit of a risky deck because of the fact that you rely so heavily on electric generator. So you could get totally set up, but you just can't find that electric generator or you don't electric generator into two lightning energies and then you lose a game. So there is that kind of risk reward factor that you kind of have to gauge on whether or not it's worth it to play the deck because you can lose some games that you probably shouldn't lose. But then again, you'll also also be winning some games because you get really lucky off those electric generators um, and you'll be able to win games that you probably shouldn't be winning but overall it's a really strong deck and I think it's going to continue to perform well it just has that kind of risk reward factor but when it gets going and it pops off it's really difficult to beat 
Moving to number four, we just have Lost Zone Toolbox in general. I will be posting the non Kyogre variant as well in the description, um, but I didn't necessarily want to put two Lost Zone variants that are so similar on this list. So we're going to use the list here that Andrew Estrada used to win the most recent Pittsburgh Regional Championship. Lost Zone Toolbox is still incredibly powerful, being able to use that Colrus's experiment and flower selecting to get tons of cards in the Lost Zone to allow you to attack with multiple powerful Pokemon like Sableye, Cramorant, Dragonite, Raikou V, and more. Now, this variant, instead of playing something like Drapion, plays the Kyogre. I think Kyogre is very, very powerful right now as it helps out against Lugia variants, Arceus variants, and just any high HP Pokemon that typically don't play Manaphy. So I think this deck is really, really good as of right now. Um, it pretty much plays like turbo but has the ability to use kyogre it's a little bit slower and technically a little bit more inconsistent but when it gets going it's one of the most powerful decks in the format and lost box still remains great it's still a really really strong deck so yeah i think it's good there's really no issues with it except some consistency issues here and there but it's really really strong Coming to number three, we have Charizard EX. Now, Charizard EX is a deck that most recently dominated uh, the Brazilian Regional Championship this weekend. William Azevedo was able to take down the tournament with a similar Charizard list. And this deck is absolutely fantastic. With the brand new set Pokemon 151 coming out, you gain the new 70 HP Charmander with that Blazing Destruction, allowing you to discard a stadium and play, and also making it more difficult for opponents to Sableye knock out multiple Charmanders at once, which is absolutely huge. You also do gain the 50 HP Call for Family Pidgey. You can still play the 60 HP if you're afraid of Lost Box, because if you do play the 50 HP one, they can knock out a Charmander and a Pidgey at once. So that has been something that I've been trying to gauge on whether or not the Call for Family is worth it, even though you do sacrifice a little bit of that matchup. But overall, I think this is the best variant of Charizard to play. You have the Arvin package along with four Seal Stone, allowing you to Arvin for pretty much the entire Pidgeot combo. And then once you get that Pidgeot set up, you're going to be able to load up Charizard after Charizard, and you're pretty much going to be able to control the game. The ability to control the game and pretty much control your own destiny is something that I really like about this deck. So you can just continuously use Quick Search to pick out whatever cards you need for any situation. And when the deck gets set up, it's just incredibly powerful. However, that's the thing. You are playing playing multiple stage twos, so it can get very inconsistent and clunky, which is a reason why I know a lot of players do not want to play the deck because the deck sometimes just draws those hands that you're just like, I have no idea what I can do with this. However, when it does get fully set up, it's one of the best decks in the game and can beat absolutely anything. I think it deserves a spot in the top three, and I wouldn't be surprised if it dominated the Peoria Regional Championship coming out. Hopping in number two here, we have a Lugia V-Star single strike. We saw Lugia V-Star, the colorless version, a couple of slots down. But here, I think the Lugia V-Star single strike version is just a little bit better. Lugia V-Star able to use that summoning star to be able to get those primal turbo Archaeopses down to power up so many different powerful attackers. You have Tyranitar, you have Stonjourner, you have Lugia V-Star as well you can attack with. You have Evil Tall, and you also have the brand new Mew EX as well, pretty much just serving as another Pokemon that can and one shot so many different things in the format and also having that restart ability is just absolutely fantastic this deck when it gets set up pretty much just can beat anything in the format however getting there can sometimes be a little bit of a chore as you are a little bit more inconsistent than things like the Carlos variant however your matchup spread is just so undeniably good that when you do get functioning it's almost hard not to justify playing the deck it's a great deck can beat pretty much anything and i think deserves a spot at that number two pick and i think is going to show up in massive numbers at the upcoming tournaments and i think it deserves to it really is just that powerful of a deck Moving on though, at number one, we have none other than Gardevoir EX. This is a deck that has been seeing tons of success recently, most recently toward Reklev getting second place at the World Championship, it doing incredibly well in regional and special events. It just is everything that you want in a deck. It has the ability to Shining Arcana Gardevoir to be able to draw tons of cards along with Refinement. It has the ability to one-shot with a one-prizer or a two-prizer, has the ability to make crazy comebacks with things like Reversal Energy, and when it gets going, it just is almost unstoppable. You don't necessarily convincingly beat every deck in format, but you don't really lose to anything. You always have some answer in a game if you're able to get going. It truly is a deck that allows your skill as a Pokemon player to shine if you know how to see sequence the deck if you know how to play matchups it's really difficult to lose games with this deck and that's a reason as to why we see so many players seeing consistent success with it because it truly can beat anything when you get going 
it's just the ultimate deck right now it is so powerful and i think that even with having weaknesses to things like charizard um ex in the format things like lugia having things like tyranitar evil tall it really doesn't matter you're still able to make those comebacks you're still able to flip the price trades with things like shining arcana and reversal energy and it truly is in my opinion undoubtedly the best deck in the standard format but with that being said that is going to do it for the video today if you enjoyed the content make sure to leave a like and subscribe as well if you're interested um in the deck list make sure to go check out the description and the comments as well i can't fit all the lists into the description so i'll put some in the comments too but anyways thank you so much for all the support as always it means the world to me this is smart tcg and i'll speak with you again soon peace out everyone if you're looking to improve your game, I do offer coaching on Metafy. I was ranked in the top 16 ranked players in the world last season, and I know what it takes to improve your game. My students want to combine three regionals last year, and I know what it takes to reach that next level. I do offer a free coaching consultation so you can get an idea whether or not coaching works for you. And along with that, I also have a singular sessions, training packages, and more. If you're looking to find out more information, feel free to book that free consultation or also don't hesitate to shoot me a message on Discord. My Discord will be in the description. All right. Thanks for sitting around and listening to this. I appreciate it. This is Smart TGG. I'll speak with you again soon. Peace out.